Okay, so this is um, a, a complex story. And it truthfully has been formed and reformed and interpreted and reinterpreted many, many times throughout the ages. And in fact, there are very few examples of this kind of story, this narrative, because it combines this spaciousness and content with some sense of stability. Its story is filled with lots of different breaks in its construction. Individual parts don't form organic whole. So I'm not here to try to solve the technical complexities within this story. It doesn't even sound much like fun. And believe me, it'll take way too long for us to get it through and we're gonna miss lunch, dinner, and breakfast if I try. But it's really not the point to try to solve the technical stuff. The point is for us to listen. So I wanna draw your attention to the story. Now the interesting thing is every time I read this story, my mind goes back to my third grade Sunday school class. It was in a damp, dark basement room where Ms. Till taught the class. She was like my Betty Busby, kindly woman who never changed. I mean, 50 years, she looked exactly the same she, every day. She was, had a beautiful spirit, just like Betty Busby, and cared so much about us kids. So what she taught us, what she taught me, is that Jacob encountered God in a very unique way, in an odd-sounding way, in a way that invites you to have to use your imagination she said, stories are stories, and they don't line up. And I still remember that lesson about how we read Scripture. She taught us to read the story, listen, and learn, instead of just merely reading the words. Miss Till pointed out that God didn't come to Jacob in the ordinary fashion. How did how does God come either in a voice or some visible event? God comes to Jacob in the form of a strange man, and then Jacob wrestles with him the entire night. And for some, that strange man is God. For others, that strange man was a personal messenger from God, regardless of who you believe that strange man was. What I remember most about what she taught me was Jacob meets God. Jacob gets to meet God. Now I could argue with you that that's all God wants from us to be in a relationship. God desires us to come face to face. So here's the point I want you to ponder. Actually, it's so brilliant, I want you to write it down. I'm not messing with you either. Here's the point to ponder. God comes in unique ways. God may be, no, let's say God is the original innovator. Because there's nothing predictable about how we meet God. Now, I know we create mental pictures or we have a concept of God that kind of neatly fits the what we believe or our, or our theology, but God doesn't fit that picture. God's that strange man wrestling all night with Jacob. And now, remember Jacob. What did he do? He stole the birthright of his brother. He wasn't this saintly Jacob. He was a, not a man full of integrity. So what I'm going to suggest to you is that God comes to you in the best way for you to have the experience. God comes to you in a way that you'll be most opening to recognizing God. It could be a struggle with a problem 
or you're wrestling with a difficult situation, sometimes what seems so uncomfortable, a bad hip or uncertain or even unnecessary turns out to be a new opening, a more meaningful sense of self or deeper relationships. It could be a moment when you're walking along the beach or on the field or you're hiking up the Blue Ridge Parkway when God comes to nudge you. Or it could be you're gathering around a table, breaking bread, drinking wine, laughing, and filling your house with stories when God comes to give you a taste of what life is and can be. Could be the ancient act of baptism that you are reminded that you belong to God. God comes to you in unique ways. But there's a bit more that Miss Till showed us in the story. She taught us that during this encounter with God, not only did Jacob see God face to face, he received what? A blessing. And that blessing changed him. As Jacob wrestled with, he tells God that he will not let him go until he receives the blessing. So what does God do? God blesses him, changes his name from Jacob to Israel, one who prevails with God. And after that blessing, Jacob is changed. And you know what? He's different. And you know how we know? Because it showed by the way his gait. He had a limp. He was changed internally and externally. So the final point that I want to offer before we gather around this table is Whenever or however God comes to you, there will be a blessing. There will be a blessing for you, and you will be changed. When God comes in a moment, in a green flash, in a tormented voice, in a sense of peace that passes all understanding in whatever form or however God uniquely comes to you, there will be a blessing. You will be blessed. Now, I know that this is all pretty simple sounding, but again, I was in the third grade. But I am deeply aware that just as God gave Jacob a blessing for not letting go, for not letting go of that strange man, we can receive a special blessing when God appears and we hold on. So friends, ask for the blessing. Hold on. And don't let go of whatever you know to be true in your life or whoever you know is present with you now and forever. Hold firmly on and receive a blessing. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for your word. Help us to be responsive and to be aware and to be open to the unique ways that you will come into our lives. Give us this blessing, for we pray in Christ's name. Amen.